exchanger runner. What is up, everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner, here for another Ginger Runner Live. I can't believe it. This is actually happening. We're doing a bunch of new tech stuff tonight, so uh, if it's a little bit laggy at first, bear with it. It'll all get better. I'm very, very excited. Tonight's a big show. While it might only be my third Ginger Runner Live, it is probably the biggest Ginger Runner Live. I, I, don't, I don't know really how else to phrase it. Uh, not only are we giving away a brand new pair of shoes, which I'm so stoked about, courtesy of RunningShoes.com, who've been helping me out along, uh, along the way for the last couple of months, almost a year now, actually, giving me uh, product review samples and stuff like that, which has just been awesome. Um, they are providing a free pair of shoes for you. So for U.S. residents only, and I apologize for those of you who are international, there's um, amazing laws against shipping uh, internationally. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's the U.S.'s thing. So if you live in the U.S., you can still win those shoes. If you live in Canada, like our guest tonight does, you unfortunately can't win the shoes. But I have many giveaways still coming this week where you can possibly win. Uh, I mentioned the guest. I do, I do actually have a guest tonight, and I'm pretty excited about this one. This man is amazingly talented. He's probably one of the best ultra runners I've ever met as far as can handle technical trails, just a brutal athlete, has amazing records. He has won Hurt 100 three times, has the course record, and has, I believe all three of his times are in the top five times ever of that race. It's, it's an incredible accomplishment. Uh, so might as well just introduce this guy. Oh, and he's handsome. <laughs> it is Mr. Gary Robbins from Vancouver, BC. What's up, Gary? Hey, with an introduction like that, I feel like I should just be like, peace, I'm out. That was amazing. All right, good stuff. It's hard to top that. And, and just uh, like that, that thanks, Gary. Uh, we appreciate you stopping by, and we'll see you guys next time. That's it. No. And good night. <laughs> Uh, so check this out. Uh, Gary actually can't see any of the graphics that I'm pulling up, but when he watches the on-demand version, he is going to be graced with greatness. Because look at this. I have a two. I have a side-by-side -side screen, Gary. You can't see it. Uh, you are next to me on the screen. Oh, yeah. yeah I, I have. I have a two-shot. It's the future. This side? Um, yeah, I'm on that side. side. <laughs> You're on that side. It's the opposite. Oh, yeah. yeah. We could even high-five. Hey! Boom! Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is the future. Uh, so I'm super stoked to have Gary on. He is the race director for the Squamish 50 miler, uh, 50k, and there's a marathon distance, yes? Or is it the 23k? And 23. Uh, that's right. So basically, I ran this race last year, and as soon as I finished, I think I ran up to Gary, who's, of course, the race director and is standing at the finish line, welcome everyone across the finish, and just was like, hey, Gary, fuck you. Fuck you for making such a hard race. And he's like, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you put together director, some that was, uh, tough races. That was the most flattering thing as a race director is for a solid three hours, every single person that came across that finish line started by saying, fuck you, and then eventually came around to give me a hug, a high five, or a smile. But everybody was cursing me, and uh, I don't think everybody truly realized what a compliment that actually was to me on that finish line last year. Yeah, I, that's what I was thinking. I was like, Gary actually likes that, because that just means he did his job. He did exactly what he set out that to was do, which was destroy right there. Us. Yeah, that was the biggest compliment I could have gotten, which is people constantly cursing me out as they came across the finish line. <laughs> so uh, I, I look up to you as not only a, an extremely talented ultra runner, but one that can really conquer terrain that very few humans can. Um, is there something that you do in your, in your training that helps set you apart I know that you live in in you live in North Vancouver, I believe. Where yeah, the trails right. are just they're brutal tough. They're brutal tough. You're talking roots and rocks and mud and hills, really steep hills. So do you think where you live helps you, or is there something else that you're doing that is helping you demolish these races that are known to be technical and create these technical races? Um, I, I it's a <clears throat> it's definitely a partially based on the fact that I do live right on technical terrain here in North Vancouver. As you yourself know, you were just up this way recently. I saw a few of your pictures. Mm -hmm. And um, the trails right out my back door are highly technical. So when, when I go out and do trail, when I run on trails, which is predominantly what I do for training, I am on technical trails most of the time. Okay. So it, it's sink or swim, basically, with the training that I do. 
Um, but because I also only started running slash trail running not that long ago, given it was 2004, 2005, I was living in Squamish, BC at the time, and again, fairly technical trails. Um, so I started on technical trails. It wasn't like I knew anything else. The funniest thing to me was in 2008, I went to, I think it was 2008, I went to uh, Miwok, California, Bay Area, um, Miwok Hunter K, and could not believe how non-technical the trails were. And it wasn't until I left home and raced internationally, raced south of the border, that I realized how unique our terrain in our backyard actually was. Yeah. Um, something else that I think contributed to that, though, is that when I first started off, I started off uh, expedition adventure racing and spent a lot of time on my mountain bike. And because I spent a lot of time on my mountain bike, I had to learn how to ride these trails technically. Oh, and that, gotcha. I recall that actually feeling impossible. I rode with a local uh, buddy of mine in Squamish right when I was getting started and ended up walking my bike over a lot of things and left that day thinking I'll never get this. And 12 months later, the trails I was walking over were my favorite trails to ride. Wow. So if you can bomb down a hill on a mountain bike over technical terrain, it's that much slower on foot, and I feel like the, the learning on a mountain bike allowed me to process the terrain at a, at a fast enough capacity that I can run over it at a good clip. Gotcha. So, yeah, that's, that's amazing that you're able to combine two sports. Now I also know that you're getting it. Oh, what, wait, we haven't even oh. introduced our drink of choice. How could that's I forget right. this most important part? Gary, what are you drinking? <laughs> um, it's train race wine today. <laughs> uh, I love it. And there, there's a couple of reasons it's train race wine. Uh, first and foremost, the gluten uh, intolerance here. So the gluten-free beer is, is all good and dandy, but wine is uh, all gluten-free. Uh -huh. And I was just in the United States less than 24 hours ago, and this sucker right here was $17. Oh, my God. That's three liters, and this will not see Friday. So uh, I don't have a big problem. <laughs> what are you talking about? So cheers. It's a red wine. It's a Cabernet Sauvignon tonight, and uh, three liters for less than $20. <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. Uh, so while you're drinking the train race wine, I'll be drinking the train race beer. Look at this. This is actually a uh, an Australian beer that was sent to me today from a fan in Australia, Andrew Barlow. Thank you so much, my friend. Cheers to you. Excuse me, I'm already be belching it up. It's Cooper's Brewery Sparkling Ale. And this is a Commonwealth country, so Gary, you might be familiar with Cooper's. I've actually drank Cooper's, and I've drank it on the Australian continent. It is a good beer. I can vouch for that. Nice. <laughs> So, uh, uh, not only do you do the Squamish 50, but you were actually just telling me about the new Cascade Trail series that you're you're running up in Vancouver as well, yeah? So the uh, the Coast Mountain Trail series. Or so, yeah, I'm sorry, Coast Mountain Trail series. Um, Coast Mountain Trails here out of North Vancouver um, through Squamish, through Whistler, North Vancouver, and then we uh, will eventually have some runs just around the corner in the other direction as well. Um, CoastMountainTrailSeries.com. It is currently a banner of six events, and they're shorter distance events from eight kilometers at the shortest up until 25 kilometers at the longest. And what I've tried to accomplish there is to get an entry-level trail running distance, but something that's also very challenging, very tough, uh, a mix of technical. It's not your standard um, entry-level trail run. It's very much a distance that can be accomplished by many people, but a lot of times the terrain is, is something very very new to them. Yeah. So... Um, and then the goal with, um, <clears throat> pardon me, one of those races in particular, it's uh, called the Sky Pilot. It's at the top of the Sea to Sky Gondola in Squamish. They're just opening this gondola in May, so we're the first ever sanctioned event to happen in association with these guys. Well done. Thank you very much. Very proud of that one. Uh, this year is 12 and 25, but next year we'll have a 50K Ultra there. And the best part about this is it's in the Alpine of Squamish, and we'll actually be able to go up onto the shoulder of a couple of really dramatic mountain faces and link them together through a couple of drainages. Wow. So really excited about uh, what, we're, what we're working towards here in the next couple of years as well. So will Squamish, uh, the Squamish have to become a part of the, the Coastal Mountain Trail series, or is that going to be a totally different entity, or how is that going to work? The Squamish 50, uh, 50K, 50 Mile, and 50-50 combined is a standalone event. Uh, the 23-kilometer version of the Squamish 50 has now been amalgamated into the Coast Mountain Trail series. Um, it allows us to keep the distances within that banner uh, comparable, and uh, the Squamish 50 was something that we established early on and have done well with, and we just want to keep it as a separate entity right now. That's awesome. Uh, for those of you, again, I'll, I'll mention it. I ran the Squamish 50 last year. It was by far the hardest race I've done. I mean, I... Did ultras last year was my first time doing ultra distances, uh, ultra marathon distances, and I really wanted to challenge myself. 
Uh, I know that the area in Squamish is just gorgeous. It's beautiful. So a big part of what I wanted to do was go run there. And when I found out there was a race there, I'm like, yes, got to sign up. I'm going to sign up for the 50-miler. It was the hardest thing I've ever done. It was painful. It was miserable. I cursed Gary's name the entire race. There were sections where I was running with other people who were doing the exact same thing. We went miles just bitching and moaning about Gary. Uh, but all of us, when we finished, earned that medal. And uh, I reached out to Gary and I was like, I want to run your race again next year, and I would like to run both of them. So Gary is actually changing it up next year. He's doing the 50-miler on a Saturday and the 50K on Sunday, correct? Correct. They're calling it the 50-50. Yes. And the Combined junior runner will be running it. And we have a limited edition finishers only 50 50 trucker hat that will be presented to people like yourself who have signed up for that distance. So, yes, as you long have as we finish. finish 50 miler, but somehow we got you to sign up for 50 miles and 50 kilometers the following year. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like think I've had too many Coopers. Just can't figure it out. <laughs> uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't miss it. Uh, it's scare, it's scaring the crap out of me. Even now, you know, six months out, I'm petrified. Um, but I very much am looking forward to that. Uh, so thank you, Gary, and for putting on really, really, really great races. We're you really excited to be back this year. Yes, I, I can't wait. And I'll be making another film. I, I I did one last year for the 50 miler. This one's gonna be great because uh, it'll encompass the entire weekend. Now. As I mentioned earlier, we are giving a Pissy of Running Shoes .com away to one of you United States lucky viewers. Uh, Gary, I know that you're Canadian. I'm, I'm so sorry that I can't I can't give the Canadians uh, a pair of the shoes. But I have to announce it now. I have to tell you guys how to do it. So I'm going to uh, bring up this title. It's Giveaway Madness. Gary can't see it, but oh, look at that. Gary's got the Canadian... <laughs> <laughs> the maple <laughs> leaf. <laughs> uh, okay, so here's here's basically what's going to go down. This is the this is the start of the giveaway. I'll I'll give you guys maybe like 20 minutes to to do this challenge. For those of you who are living in the United States or have a United States shipping address, so we can send those shoes to that address. Here's what you're going to do. I ran last year's Squamish 50 miler in a particular shoe. I'm not going to say what it is. And Gary, I don't want you to say what what it is, because I know that you love this shoe as well. In fact, Gary ran many races last year in this shoe. If you go to runningshoes.com, they have a whole bunch of them. I won't say what it is, but I have a question. What'd you say? Repeat that, Gary. Uh, you're breaking up, unfortunately. I was trying to pretend nothing was going wrong, and <laughs> nothing is going wrong. Just listen, because not shipping. Everything's, everything's, everything's totally working. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, my camera has curious. since shrunk my frame. I don't know why this is happening. Uh, so I ran in this shoe, the Squamish 50, last year. I love this shoe. I even have a pair upstairs in my room that uh, I've been working on as well. Uh, RunningShoes.com gave me that pair for Squamish 50, and they rocked it. Gary, I know, ran in this shoe last year. If you can find my re review of this shoe, if you are familiar with which shoe it is, it's in my, view, it's in my Squamish 50 video. If you go to my review video of that shoe, and you are the first person to comment, hashtag Gary Robbins. You'll be the first person to comment, hashtag Gary Robbins, on that video. Go there right now. You have to be, oh. you have to have a shipping address in the United States. That's pretty much the only requirement. Uh, go do it. Go do it. Someone's already in there. Someone's, it's already one. It has to be done. That, I mean, that's, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking someone is already over there. I'm going to give people some time, but, man, if it's already, I'm going to refresh on that particular video just in case uh, someone might have already won these shoes. I love these things. <laughs> Seriously, this is one of my favorite pairs of shoes ever. Uh, I'll give you a hint. The brand of the shoe is behind Gary's head. <laughs> <laughs> if that helps at all. I don't know if it does. I don't know how those guys out there. They just happened to, to be there with a, that said Solomon right behind me. It was very <laughs> coincidental. Okay. So no comments yet. So no, one, no one has found it yet. Which is good. So I'll, I'll, we'll just give it some time. Uh, we, will, we will do that. Now let's talk about Hurt 100. So you just won Hurt 100 in January. January 18th, I believe. This is again one of the... Correct, yes. I, w I would consider this. I've never seen the course. I don't know much about it. I'm sure you can verify this, but it's one of the 
toughest 100 mile races in the world? Is it one of the toughest 100 mile races in the world? It, it, has, been, it has been ranked top 10 uh, by some entities for sure. Okay. Um, certainly, it, it is right up there as one of the tougher ones out there. The, one of the things that makes the race so difficult is truly is the 36 hour cutoff time. Um, it's a difficult course in and of itself, 25,000 feet of climbing, 20 mile loops, highly technical, uh, but you get an awful lot, a very high percentage of the finishers come in in the last 90 minutes and a lot of people just miss. If the cutoff was a little bit longer, you would have a, a, very, a much higher finisher rate, but um, it's a very tight cutoff at 36 hours for a lot of people. Wow. I didn't, I didn't realize that the cutoff, I didn't realize that that was the, uh, a major factor there. 36 hour cutoff for that distance with that type of terrain, that's crazy. And you, so yeah, you, you yeah, it really it. is. You see people work pretty hard year in, year out. Um, and you've won it three times now. Yes. Uh, Amazing. Um, so sorry, you are breaking up quite dramatically, but I'm able to hear you, but not see you as much. But I've got, I'm piecing together. Uh, I have raced it three times, and I've won it three times. I've been very proud of all the runs that I've had in Hawaii. Um, something for me that's made it so special though is just it's a really fun community of people, mm -hmm. and I was I. I I consider myself to have been fortunate for the fact that there were two years that I couldn't run it, I was injured, and I volunteered for the full 36 hours those two years. And because of that, I developed a lot of really lifelong friendships with a lot of the community, a lot of the people. And uh, we, we've been fortunate enough to go back to Hawaii outside of the race. And we can stay with friends, and it's, just, uh, it's, it's more than just a race for us when we go to Hawaii these days. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's not just a vacation, it's seeing family, right? Because you've been there for so many years, and you're such a part of that community, which is exactly. so cool. Now, you have the course record. Were you going for the course record again this last year? Was there anything about this last year that made it different than the previous victories? So I was going for course record again. Uh, they pay $500 for course record. That's the, the big prize purse of ultra running. But uh, the two times I've been there before and raced it, it covered my flight because um, the flights from Bellingham, an hour south of here, mm -hmm. direct are less than four hundred dollars. The average price that I paid to fly direct is three hundred and seventy-five bucks. So, wow. Um, so it's a nice bonus if you can fly for free and, and take five hundred bucks. Yeah. So I was going for course record. Went out on course record pace. Was on course record pace through forty, if not fifty miles. Um, but it was a much hotter day and a much higher humidity, humidex than I've experienced there in the past. And on top of that, there was no wind. So every pretty much 360 days a year, there's a wind that goes across those ridgelines. And it, it made me feel better when the locals even commented on this. It was one of the very few times where there was absolutely no wind whatsoever. So it was 85% humidity, no wind. The temperature wasn't, wasn't um, insane. It was probably about 27 degrees. So I think that's high 70s, maybe low 80s. Mm -hmm. But uh, in, in January, coming out of winter, um, it, it, it affected a lot of people's races. So I was on course record pace through the better part of half of mm -hmm. the race. And then the heat really started taking it out of me a little bit, and but I could see that coming. It was um, it was it was inevitable, inevitable given the day. So the fun thing for me though is John Salmonson, the race director, uh, good buddy, he pays out the five hundred dollars. He sits in his captain's chair at the start finish, and it's twenty mile loops. So after the first lap, twenty miles, I was on course record pace, and I wow. told him if he gave me two hundred and fifty dollars, I'd sit down and stop running. So <laughs> yeah, so he gets kicked out of that. 20 miles later, after 40 miles, I'm still on course record pace, and I tell him it's gone up to $350 to get me to sit down at this point. And he can't believe that I'm on course record pace, given the conditions of the day. And he actually looked at me and said, you've got to be shitting me. You have got to be shitting me. Like, <laughs> how are you possibly doing this today? Uh, but then by the time I came in on 60 miles, I had started to crumble. So I came in on 60 miles, and I said, okay, we're back to 250 and after 80 miles, I came in. I said, "John, if you give me 50 bucks, I will just sit down and stop running right now." Oh man! He said he'd never do it, and I ended up having to continue on to the finish. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's incredible. Uh, I was watching some of the live stream of that because they had little live cameras set up at some of the aid stations, and I mean, I'm rooting for you, right? Because I'm just a big fan of you. So when I would even like, I was plotting the map and looking at the map and going, "Okay, Gary Robbins left." this aid station at 9 p.m., which means he's going to get into this one at, like, two hours. And I would sit there and watch. I really wanted to see you finish. I just I wanted to see you win, right? So I'm waiting there for you to win, and it was, it was just taking forever. You were taking way too long, let's just be honest. So I left my computer. 
you were just being slow, man. I don't know what you were doing. <laughs> uh, so I left my computer for a bit, and I came back, and literally as I came back to sit down, I saw you come across the finish line. I was like, yeah, Gary Robbins with a win. It was awesome. Well done. <laughs> uh, and I want to say well, something. We have that. a winner, Gary. We have a winner. We have nice. a winner. The ultra sports, <laughs> ultra sport. Oh, do who do we have as a winner? Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I know that we're one. I want to apologize because we are we're having some lag issues. I believe one of my roommates is playing video games, and that's going to take up internet, which is awesome. Uh, we have a winner. <laughs> the correct shoe that I ran Squamish 50 in. Gary Robbins ran a lot last year in. We both love it. It's the Solomon Sense Mantra. Yes, my favorite shoe. Beautiful shoe, and the winner. Mr. Jeff Allen was the first to comment on my review of the Sense Mantra. Jeff Allen, congratulations, my friend. You win a brand new Jeff. pair of shoes. Nice work. Nice, nice work. work. Awesome shoes. Uh, so you can choose the Sense Mantras. I know the Mantra 2s actually come out. And uh, Running Shoes is like, let's give a pair of the Mantra 2s away. I'm like, that would be perfect. But there are a couple other shoes that uh, you and I can talk about if you if you have a preference for Road Trail there. Mr. Allen, uh, so what I'd like you to do is in the comments, or you know what, email me. If you go to gingerrunner.com slash contact, you can actually email me and say, hey, it's me. I won those shoes. Hook me up. And I'll be like, cool. And I'll hook you up. Uh, Gary, I want to talk about Schemo. Now, for those of you who don't know, ski mountaineering, it, 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 I don't want to say it's like all the rage right now. People have been doing it for quite a while. But is this is this your first season doing it, or have you been doing it for a while? Uh, absolutely, my first season with Schemo Racing. So I was uh, I was a ski bum for a years back in the late 90s, early 2000s, and I started ski touring in the mid 2000s. But then when I started focusing on ultra running specifically, I actually kind of put my skis in a box and just uh, walked away from it a little bit. So I went sole focus with the ultra running, and it's come full circle now where I put all that time into training and developing a muscular endurance for ultra running that I now finally come back to the multi-sport and embracing that thing, that side of things again. So this season, specifically, um, and as influenced by some good buddies of mine. So track back a little bit further. There's a really talented group of runners out of, and mountaineers out of Squamish right now. Mm -hmm. um, the three in particular, let's go for uh, the three that I met through running. Uh, Brad Schiff, Nick Elson, and Eric Carter are all accomplished ski mountaineer racers, and they all raced their first um, ultra race this year. So wow. Nick Elson finished third in the Nienacker in his first 50K. Wow. Eric Harper won the 50K at the Squamish 50, and Brad Shales won the Squamish 23K. <clears throat> so I started training with these guys throughout the summer, got to know them well, had wanted to get back into ski mountaineering, and they just basically pushed the buttons that needed to be pushed. So in October, I went and acquired some gear, and in November, we started uh, heading out in the mountains and, and doing some ski touring together. And the goal was to do multiple schemo races this season, mm -hmm. knowing full well that these guys are some of the best that we have in the country. Um, so I did my first ever schemo race two weeks ago at Alpental in Washington, which is at Snohom. Snow yeah. yeah. Very familiar with uh, Alpha Summit, yeah. so call me Summit, and it's it's a very interesting uh, it's a very interesting sport. It's yeah, it's um yeah, of course you are, of course you are. It's a very interesting sport. It's high intensity. Um, it's threshold racing for a lot of it, and it has this great mix of of skill sets in terms of the fact that you need to be able to to redline right off the start. You need a technical ability in how to climb up the mountain on your on your ski gear on your skins, and then you need a certain confidence in, in your recklessness at getting back down the mountain because for, all, for basically it's like a trail race. You're racing to the top of the mountain and back down multiple times as fast as you can. Yeah. So you're racing down the mountain on those skis as fast as you can. You're, you're as reckless as you can be without, uh, without basically wholesaling, losing everything and, uh, and injuring yourself. Now some of this so terrain is extreme uh, yeah. too, right? Sorry? Some of this terrain is extreme. Right, I mean, you're talking like mountain ridges and snow caps, yeah, and absolutely. yeah, and it, at Alpital, some of it went out of bounds into their backcountry. They had a uh, some boot packing sections, which basically mean the skis have to come off. They have to go attached to a backpack because it's not vertical, but it's it's very steep. So you're you're driving your boots in the snow and kind of climbing up these sections. Mm -hmm. it, it has a, a a big sense of adventure to it, which is something that I really love. Um, awesome. I learned my limitations, and those are that my lack of experience in the technical climbing uh, on the snow. I was just a little bit uh, slippy. I was slipping a little bit with the the skins I was using on my skis, 
So I ended up falling a couple of times, which cost me a couple of minutes. But uh, when I was moving, I was moving, um, I was keeping pace with guys. And on the downhill sections, because I had that experience, I was I was even passing some people. So I finished tenth. Uh, I was pretty proud of that, given it was my first schema race. And I'm hoping to do a couple of them next year. It, I was hoping to do one more this year, but it doesn't look like it's going to uh, it's going to play out at this point, unfortunately. Well. Sorry, I just took a big swig of beer. Uh, I can't wait to see what you do more with schema. I mean, that, that sport seems even more extreme than ultramarathon running, so I uh, can't wait to see what you do in that sport. But it also made me think of a question, and then the question made me realize, I want to do a segment with you, Gary, called uh, a Quickie Question Quiz, where I just ask you rapid-fire questions, and you give me rapid-fire answers. Are you ready for this? Okay, here's the thing. I think this is wonderful. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. There's a huge delay in, in me receiving you right now. I, so, I just on. realized that. So don't... So, so we'll do this rapid fire, but don't judge me when you see how slow I am to respond. It's not a lack of processing what's being said. It's my computer, I swear. No, tr trust me, it's probably my computer. Uh, I'm reading the chat room and everyone's like, Gary sounds like a robot. Oh, wait, he's perfect. Uh, Ethan looks like he's generating... Like, I think there's just some bandwidth that you use, so no worries. We're going to do this segment regardless. I'm powering through, Gary. This is how you finish an ultra marathon. So you're going to say something. You pointed at me. I missed the last thing that you said, but everything else... <laughs> was that the first question? No, no. Uh, I just love the Internet. The Internet is killing it right now. Uh, so it's a little, little segment I like to call Quickie Question Quiz. And today... It is with Mr. Gary Robbins. So, Gary, I'm going to wait for a moment when you can actually hear me, okay? So let me know when you can, when you can actually hear me. It's going to take a while. I'm hearing you. It's a little robotic. It's a little dry. Yeah, it feels like um, you're in quicksand with your voice or something there. But I think I can make out what you're saying. Okay. I'm getting your audio fine. Your video is a little laggy, but your audio is fine. So that's we really just need your audio. We don't need your face at all, really. So let me know when you're ready, and I will ask the first question, and we will deal with the delay. All right. I believe I am ready. Not quite sure, but I believe I'm ready for this. Gary, your favorite color? Uh, blue. Oilers or Canucks? Did you say something about the Canucks? Oilers or Canucks? Or? <laughs> Oilers. Oh, I just hold up a jersey to yeah, say anything. It. This is all you can see right now. Boxers or briefs? <laughs> Boxers. Boxers. <laughs> Trails or road? Uh, it sounded like you said braille or road, but I'm going to say trail. <laughs> Schemo or ultra? Ultra running. Schemo's a hell of a lot of fun, though. Wine or beer? Uh, beer. I'm definitely, uh, I, I much prefer beer, but this is a really good deal. I mean, come on, 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Miley Cyrus or Winona Ryder? Oh God, I, I am not a fan of Miley Cyrus, so we're gonna I'm gonna just default to uh, Winona Ryder. <laughs> and that's it. That's the quick, quickie question. All right, quiz. We we did. It, it kind of worked. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually it really surprised. Worked. It almost worked. Now, um, my camera is being wonky. Like if you look at this, now I have these vertical black bars on either side of my face. I don't know where those came from. I don't know why that's happening. Uh, regardless. This is a segment that we wanted to do on this show every single week. And Gary, you can chime in uh, uh, whenever you want. Um, I am inspired by runners like Gary. Every single day I go for a run. Anytime I go, uh, anytime I go for a race, anytime I'm training, um, I'm constantly inspired by other runners. And what I really wanted to do was ask you guys for stories uh, about how you've been inspired or how maybe you've dealt with uh, negative things in your life with running or through running or, or with other sports, endurance sports, triathlon, schemo, anything like that. So it's a segment that we're going to be calling every week called Runspiration, where your stories will help inspire many. Uh, so I'm going to read the first first story here. Let me just bring it up. I had it pulled up to the side. This comes from Arthur Elias. Elias? Arthur? Uh, it's, a, it's a very good story. So... Um, so I'll just get right into it. I saw on Facebook that you asked for stories to share. Here is mine. After high school, I found myself stagnant. I hadn't gone back to school, college, and really didn't care to. At 23, I found myself sitting in North Carolina, depressed and drug addicted. 
I smoked two packs of cigarettes a day, drank about an 18 pack a day, and did any drug I could find. I weighed around 400 pounds. I hated life, honestly. I had never ran or really done much of anything. My older brother, who I was living with, is a runner and would ask me every morning if I wanted to run. After months and months, I finally said yes. I ran my first mile in around 20 minutes. My brother told me about crazy people that ran 100 miles in 24 hours, and I thought about how amazing that would be. I found videos and instantly became a follower. Now, four years later, I do 15 miles a day with long runs going to 20 or 30 miles. I've moved to Washington for running, been in my college newspaper, as well as had an article on the Ultra Talk blog. I've won a 50K and will be running my first 100 miler next month. I went, I went back to school and will continue my education here in Washington. Running has become who and what I am. I seriously believe I'd be dead if it wasn't for running. My life has changed and I owe it all to running and the amazing people like you who keep pushing me in hopes of bettering myself and reaching my goals. Thank you for your time and good luck in every way, Arthur. Yeah, That's you, you, I, okay. That was a struggle for me to actually keep up with what you were saying there. But I'm pretty confident. I just heard you say that that person was up to 400 pounds and serious into drugs and smoking and everything else and yeah. completely turn their life around. Yeah. That, that's phenomenal. I don't know how that couldn't, we couldn't inspire every single person that's, that's listening right now. So I missed the last section. I, it sounded like they, have they run a 50 miler, is that correct? Uh, uh, I'll just uh, reread it. He won a 50K. He won a 50K. Yeah, which is incredible. And he'll be running his first 100 miler next month. That's phenomenal. I, when I, I talk about my story, I talk about how I was 10 kilos heavier than I am now, like 30 pounds kind of thing, and I think that's a big deal. That's, that, that is uh, hats off to that person. Hats off to that person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I read that, um, I asked for submissions just the other night, and when I read that one, it was like, oh, man, uh, there are people out there who are far more inspiring than me that have an amazing story to tell and really prove that running helps. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. And everyone has a story, right? Everyone has a story about how they started running or, or what got them into it. And yep. uh, this guy's story was amazing. Um, so thank you, Arthur, for sharing it with me. And uh, I hope it's okay that I shared it with, with everybody. And I will be posting that on my, my blog as well with this Ginger Runner Live episode, just in case it is garbled, just in case the live feed wasn't perfectly crystal clear it's uh, so everyone can read it because I think it's important. Um, okay, good. Just making sure everything's working. Uh, I want to, uh, before we before we turn this over to the chat room, because I have a lot of people in the chat room that are, excuse me, this Cooper's is delicious. Uh, a lot of people have been asking questions the entire show of Gary. Uh, Gary, you're also a coach. Now, if people want to find you and maybe ask you questions uh, or hire you as a coach, where can they find you? What are the social networking spots they can find you? <clears throat> well, that's actually interesting because... Um, up until about 12 hours ago, any emails I get asking for coaching, I've always passed them on to other people. I've politely declined. I've coached a few people a couple of years ago. Um, I enjoyed it, but I found that it needed to be kind of all in to do that. And uh, I've revisited a little bit in the last little while about how much I truly enjoyed doing that while I was doing it and reconsidered. But reconsider to the extent that I've paired up with someone. So earlier I was talking about the Schemo Racers and the guy who won the Squamish 50K, his name being Eric Carter. Eric Carter is a PhD student. We were recently on a ski mountaineering trip, and we just, by the end of the day, had said, you know, we need to partner up to do ultra-run coaching because we both bring a different skill set and a different knowledge to the product. So Eric and I literally got off the phone a couple hours ago, and I was like, okay, so we're doing this. We're going to go forward with this because I'm going to talk about this tonight. So as of right now, this is international breaking news right now <laughs> on the Ginger Runner. <laughs> <laughs> that myself and Eric Carter, um, starting within the next two weeks, will actually be offering a specifically tailored Squamish 50K, run. I'm running my first 50 training plan, and we'll also be doing a more customized individual training plan for people looking for something else more specific or thinking about doing the 50 miler. What was that? What? Oh, who was that? Who was it? What? 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 <laughs> no, it was nothing. It was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the best way to go about that, since we don't have anything in place just yet, uh, we've basically we've started working on our programming. Uh, we haven't decided where we're going to host it exactly yet, 
the easiest way to get a hold of me uh, is just run at squamish50.com. We can go right through Squamish50. Um, those emails will go to myself and Jeff. We can annoy Jeff, and that's totally fine with me. Um, but we will be offering run coaching very shortly, and I'm very excited to be doing that, and it's something that I thoroughly enjoyed a couple of years ago, and I've gotten uh, numerous requests for in the last few months. So I apologize to everybody who I politely declined originally, but now we're going to go for it. Hell yes. <laughs> Hell yes. Uh, and will that be for anybody international, or uh, the, do you do it through email as well, or, or would you like them to be local? No, not it doesn't have to be local whatsoever. The um, anticipation with the, the second tier training program, um, outside of just the training plan, the more personalized plan, is going to be follow-ups um, weekly via Skype, by email. It'll be a very invested process. Um, I would not want to be a part of coaching somebody if I wasn't developing a rapport with that person as well and getting to know them on a, on a deeper level throughout that process. So sure. it, it will definitely be uh, very interactive and there's no need to be to be local whatsoever. Excellent. Well, Gary Robbins, I appreciate you stopping by, man. This uh, uh, I always love talking to you. I don't get to see you as often as I'd like to. Did you? And, go ahead. I'm cutting you off. I'm cutting you off real quick. Go. I'm like, did you do this on purpose? Because your voice just became crystal clear at the exact second that you're letting me go. The entire <laughs> time we're talking, there's this weird scrambly robot face on my screen, and I'm struggling to hear what you're saying. And now I can, I can, I can actually see the individual hairs of your mustache, of your facial hair, and you're, you're going. <laughs> I pressed the uh, release bandwidth button. Oh, I see. And yeah. that fixed everything. I, on I honestly have no idea what's going on tonight. Uh, yes! He still has it. <laughs> that was a that was a gift I gave Gary before the Squamish 50 miler. Had I ran the race, then gave him the gift, I would never have given it to him. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> it was that hard. Uh, but uh, no, I of course I would have. That's awesome that you still have it. I love of it. Of course I still have this. I love this thing. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, Gary, I absolutely appreciate you uh, taking some time out of your evening um, drinking wine to join us on Ginger Runner Live. Any, uh, where can people find you? So we, we have you on Twitter, um, at Gary underscore Robbins. Uh, yes. And I know that they can find you on Facebook. Is there, do you have a website you'd like to plug? Yes, uh, GaryRobbins.ca. Oh, and since we're plugging stuff, there's one other thing I should mention. Bring it. There's an ultra running camp that I'm going to be a part mm. of this summer. Mm -hmm. July 17th to 22nd in Whistler, British Columbia. What makes this very exciting for me is Stevie Kramer is actually going to be a part of this thing. If you don't know Stevie Kramer, she's the defending skyrunning world champion. She's based out of Colorado, and she's also a co-host on Talk Ultra, and she is just a fantastic person. Hell so there's yes. Someone, yeah, there's someone else named Paul Romero who's, who's created, who's starting the whole thing from the top. Myself and Stevie are working along with Paul. Um, it's going to be an all-inclusive we're working with the Four Seasons Resorts. It'll be a high net. Uh, and if you're interested, everything's being finalized right now. It is 100% guaranteed to happen, and it is ultimate-potential.com. That's yeah. awesome. I, I love it. The fact you got them involved as well, this is going to be epic, dude. This is going to be epic. Yeah. We're going to have some fun up in Whistler doing that one. Uh, I love it. So you guys, go go to GaryRobbins.ca. Follow him on Twitter. Drop this guy some messages telling him. Go ahead. We got a high five out though. <laughs> Wait, I gotta find the right side. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Three, two, yeah! Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, so Gary, I'll let you go on Skype. We're gonna do some post show here in just a second. If you want to, I can bring you in on Gmail, which might work a lot better than the Skype thing is working out. So if you want to stick around and just make sure that you're logged into Gmail, I can probably yep. bring you in on that side. Done. Do it. Okay, cool. Ladies and gentlemen, Gary Robbins. Woo! He is amazing. He is just he's just one of my favorite uh, ultra runners. I'm a big fan of Gary Robbins. It was awesome to have him on the show. Uh, so thank you, Gary, if you're still listening, for stopping by. For those of you who are watching the show live, I apologize. Tonight, uh, the bandwidth seemed to be a major issue. Um, I think a roommate is playing video games. Which is always good. He started in the middle of the broadcast, so I can't just very well stop and, and go um, tell him to shut his yapper. But I apologize. We'll get it. We'll get it fixed for next week. This is all very new. This technology is all very new and still working a lot of bugs out. So again, 
Thank you guys for stopping by. I'm going to stick around in the chat room, and we're going to go through all the questions and all the comments, which uh, is going to be it's my, my favorite part ever of Ginger Runner. So stick around in the chat room. If you have questions for Gary, he's going to be jumping in there as well. In the meantime, train hard, race harder, and party hardest. I'll see you guys next Monday live for Ginger Runner Live. Uh, that's it. Train, race, beer. Peace out. All right, I'm back. I am sorry, guys. What is going on with my ca like my look? My camera squished me, which just blows. Uh, I don't know why that's why that's happening. Um, let's see if I can get Gary in here again through the Gmail process. Google Plus Hangouts. Uh, add a person, Gary Robbins. Oh, there's three versions. Which one is he? I think it's that one. Um, okay, let's see if I can add him. Nope. Oh, my circles. Invite. So, Gary, if you're now watching the live stream, I hope that you get that invite and you can join us in this post-show action. Um, so, those of you in the chat room, what the hell was going on? What the hell was going on? What did I miss? Uh, it seems like it was working for a little bit and then it went real shitty and then it started working again. Ugh, I don't... This is awful. I feel super bad about this. Um, so keep me posted here, guys, in the chat room. But thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, again, I really, really enjoy Gary. He's a beast. A beast ultra marathon runner. And I believe a fellow ginger. I think... I'm pretty sure he's got ginger hair and a, an amazing ginger beard. I'm going to use his email to add him here. Um, I'm going to let you guys comment for a second. Robin. There we go. Let's see if, they, let's see if he gets that. Uh, the, this quality is Cloverfield-ish. That's not good. That's not exactly what I'm shooting for in my Ginger Runner live broadcast. We're going to have to see if this thing uh, looks super shitty on the back end or if Google has this entire time been working okay and docu or recording it just fine. Chris Fargo is replacing the Ginger Runner. What? Why? Hey, Ginger, who wrote your theme music? I did. Christopher Holloway, Godzilla live broadcast. Oh, there we go. We, we do got Gary in this. Let's see. He's, he's here, but he's not video yet. And wait for him to get video. Hide from broadcast. Nope. I don't know why his camera is not working. Gary, you might need to turn on your camera. That's pretty much it. Uh. Kick his, I know, Chris. Uh, Christopher Holloway says, go kick his ass. I'm, I believe he's referring to my roommate. Lowell, need to make sure I delete my comments. I think this shows in the comments permanently. You can, uh, Chris C. Hey, Ethan, don't worry. I answered everyone's questions. <laughs> says Chris. Ah, oh, that's what I get. Nice, Chris Vargo. Very nice of you. Ah, yes. Gary Robbins says, join this video call. Sorry, guys. Bear with me. Internet is just working. Look at that. This is all I'm getting. It's just his, uh, just his logo. I'm waiting for the live feed. Uh, back to dial-up. I think the name is going to stick now, Jeff. Uh, Ascent to Summit. Ha, ha, ha. Dallas Green. Maybe his roommate left the Call of Duty multiplayer room. There we go. We got, we got Gary back. Gary, can you hear me? I don't know if Gary can hear me. He's on. He's on live. But he's not talking. Uh, I don't see any audio coming from Gary. There he is. Gary. <laughs> Gary, if you can hear me, I'm going to need you to turn uh, your audio off. Is it working? <laughs> I can... 
Can uh, you hear me? Yeah, Gary. Uh, I can hear you, Gary, but I think you're listening to the live feed online, which is about two minutes delayed. So uh, <clears throat> I would encourage you to turn on your... I, I, I can start uh, talking, but can you hear me? Yes, but you cannot hear me. That is, oh, wait. That is what's happening. No, nope, you're muted. Okay. Release bandwidth again. Stevie is smoking hot. Video is perfect now. Yeah, that took 40 minutes. Ha, ha, ha. They must have I'm, stopped playing video games. My audio is up. Yeah, Gary, I can actually hear you just fine. I think everyone else can hear you just fine. Um, but you can't hear me. Uh, and I'm not quite sure why you can't hear oh. me. Look, everyone, it's Gary Robbins. Gotcha. I think that might help. So if I go down to this, okay, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, okay, I can see your lips moving, but I can't actually hear you. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm not the greatest lip reader, but we can try. I don't know why the... Uh, it's... Oh, it's technology. Oh, technology. See, you repeated me. I saw that. Oh, yeah, I, you can totally... Can just, yeah. That, yeah, if you do this, lots of this, then that that's all I need. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have an Etch-a-Sketch handy, do you? You can just hold it up no, to the I screen and communicate via that, maybe? This, this is, might help. I... No? I'm sorry. Can you hear me um, now, Gary? I don't. Why? Hmm. Settings. Turn this your is, volume up. Okay. But turn the volume Why? on the video down. <laughs> I love it. Uh, you should be able to hear comments. me, and then I should do maybe I'll this. You. Are you talking? Yes. Whoa! Hello? Oh, see, now you can hear me. Yes, but can you hear me? Yes. But can you hear me? Yes. But can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I had so, to. So you can hear me now. Everything's good? Yes. Okay, All right. Good. We're in that commercial. What is that, T-Mobile or something? Verizon? Can you it, hear me it, now? Honestly, uh, this is, yeah, this is super funny. We're just like, hey, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> okay, awesome. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming back and sticking around in the post show. Uh, people love you, Gary. First of all, in the chat room, people love you. We did run into a bunch of technical stuff, so it looks like someone was stealing the bandwidth, whether it was YouTube not being polite or it was my roommate. Um, Who do your so roommate? Try, if, I'm going to blame it on my roommate. A lot of good questions in here. Oh, let's see. There's well, a lot I, of comments. I happened to come across one when I was scrolling through stuff there, and it said, okay. why, why gluten-free? Oh, yeah. Great. Go for it. Seven years ago. So my story is this. So tracking all the way back to my teenage years, I had major stomach distress. I had gone to see my doctor numerous times. I just got diagnosed as irritable bowel syndrome because it was the easiest way for them to just say go away. Yeah. I was on multiple medications. Then in my mid-20s, my early 20s, I started to be, uh, suffering from debilitating heartburn. Um, I got on progressively stronger medications, and the last medication that I was on actually ceased all acid production in my esophagus. Oh, my God. Yeah, and I was on this thing for two years. It's not good, um, but it allowed me to lead a normal and comfortable life. I had a gastrectomy earlier on in the process, and the doctor said to me that I was suffering from acid reflux, uh, and that I could have my esophagus looped in a surgery that would solve this issue. So after two years on this medication, I went back to another doctor because I had moved cities, and I said, I had been told about the surgery. I want to get the surgery. I don't want to be on drugs anymore. It doesn't make sense for me. And he says, well, I wasn't that doctor, so we need to do another gastrectomy. So he does, and he says, I now have an ulcer. So now I've got two very conflicting pieces of information from two separate doctors. Oh, and I God. think, this is insane. This, like, there's, no, there's no cohesion in what they're actually telling me here. This is nine years into a process of seeing six different doctors through the different towns that I had lived in and not finding any answers. And finally, a friend directed me to a naturopath, and I wasn't a naturopathic believer at the time by any stretch, but she made me promise to do it. The naturopath basically said, I just want you to try a gluten-free diet for two weeks. And 72 hours after she got me to buy in, my issues were solved. And it was nine years and six doctors and two gastrectomies and all kinds of crazy, crazy stuff and all these medications and in the end, it just ended up being a complete inability to process some foods. So this was seven years ago, prior to the current trend, prior to the current... I mean, a lot of people choose the gluten-free diet these days, and 
I think that's wonderful, <laughs> primarily because it means that there's a lot more selection for gluten-free products. They're cheaper than they've ever been before, and they're more yeah. delicious than they've ever been before. But for me, it was a necessity. So then I had full testing done after that fact, and have a, a very, very high sensitivity and tolerance to gluten, um, right on the cusp of celiac. So I actually had the full medical celiac testing done, because at the time, you could get a tax credit over and above everything you spent on your groceries for gluten-free foods for the difference in regular foods. As an example, a, a loaf of gluten-free bread can cost $5. A regular loaf of bread can cost 99 cents. You could apply for a tax credit for 4 bucks per loaf of bread, which adds up annually. So I went to get this test done, and I, I like literally missed by a couple of points for them to diagnose. But I hadn't touched a piece of gluten in over a month, and the doctor basically said, if you want to pass, if you want to pass or fail, whatever you want to call it, go on a gluten, all gluten diet for two weeks, come back, and you'll, you'll pass this with flying colors. I had no interest in that. I just walked away and was happy doing so. So for me, it was a necessity, and I've been very fortunate that it solved so many issues. And, it, and in the end, it solved secondary issues that I didn't even think would be solved by this. The predominant issue, the primary issue that I referenced was debilitating heartburn. There was also stomach distress. There was also cloudiness of mind. There was also, I'm not, I don't want to paint a picture of me being an anxious person because I wasn't and I'm not, but I noticed that I was a little bit more calm and at ease uh, once this was removed from my diet. And it's just amazing to me how still in 2014, even with it becoming such a thing now, um, it's still not the first thought for people to get proper food allergy testing when they're suffering from something. And debilitating heartburn is not one of the more recognized side effects of gluten intolerance. So for me, it was a necessity. It solved a lot of issues. Um, I will still drink a wheat-free beer from time to time. Okay. And barley within that beer um, doesn't affect me um, super negatively. It does have an effect, but I, I, in my testing, barley didn't flare things up as much. So I have a, a like what I consider to be a little loophole. So I will still drink Guinness uh, if I don't have a race within a three or four week period. Within three to four weeks of a race, it's all in. It's 100%. And that's why I also enjoy the $20 box of wine because uh, it's much easier to know that I'm getting my gluten-free product. That's incredible, man. That's incredible that you were able to determine that it was a gluten intolerance and that solved all your issues. I went to the doctor asking him to loop my esophagus to end my pain. And what shocks me is that if I had still been seeing the original doctor, he would have performed this surgery and it would have fixed nothing. And it was just shocking to me to come to a realization of that and how there is a disconnect between the naturopathic, the homeopathic doctors and the medicinal doctors and the truth as with many things, lies somewhere in between. And I'm not all homeopathic, naturopathic, and I'm not all the other way because both have a place. What I have just experienced is that you just need to have an open mind, and with any problem that you're suffering from, there's an answer, but you have to continue asking the questions of different people until you find that answer. And for right. me, it was a nine-year process. And the crazy thing was, sorry to rant here, but I, no, I went fine. out and bought a bunch of gluten-free books back... Um, seven years ago when I got diagnosed and in the, I, I think it was the gluten-free Bible was the first one I read. In there, they said the standard average diagnosis was a nine-year process. So my nine years in figuring this out was exactly in line with what the majority of people went through at that period of time. Damn. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. So that's why. That answers that one, that, that one question in a nice 10-minute rant. <laughs> uh, but it, it makes perfect sense, and you are like a, 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 a tested a guinea pig. I don't want to say guinea pig, but you are a, a, a case, uh, a, a case that it proves it does, in fact, help people, and it's not just like a fad diet, but you actually had symptoms that were cured by the fact you gave up gluten. 100%. And something else that's interesting, actually, is I spent some time in Europe in the last couple of years, and through some of the reading I've done... I've realized that the European wheat chain is actually of a completely separate evolutionary um, grain than what we have in North America because we've genetically modified our grain in North America so much. So the typical gluten content with North American based products is actually quite higher than a lot of European French based products. And I put this to the test when I was there a couple of years ago. After UTMB, I went on, for all intents and purposes, an all gluten diet to 
to experience all the wonderful French pastries. And what I found was my reactions negatively were a fraction, like 25% of, of, I would have to consume three to four times as much to get a quarter of the reaction that I was getting back here in North America. Wow. So I also believe through anecdotal evidence personally and through doing some reading that we're actually more afflicted in North America than most people realize. Wow. That's that's incredible. Yeah, I mean, you. How much time did you spend last year in Europe? I know you were at UTMB for a while. UTMB last year was uh, it was nine nine days. I was in Europe total. Okay. Yeah. We didn't even get to that tonight. We didn't even get to UTMB. We didn't get to the foot. You broke your foot oh, yeah. twice while you were running. Twice in yeah. two years. Is that right? Two years. Twice in one year. Oh. I was on crutches for eight and a half months in a calendar year, and it was 100% non weight bearing injury. So it was a it was a pretty hor horrible year, um, but I also met my now wife. So there, w there were some very positive things that came out of that year. But yeah. in terms of just having something stolen from me, it was a uh, it was quite an emotional process to 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 fight my way through that and to convince myself because the sport changed quite a bit while I was injured. I mean, yeah. I was I was on crutches for eight and a half months out of a calendar year, but I did lose two years of of competitive racing. And in those two years, the sport got faster, and um, it felt like I may have been past my prime and might not have been able to get back to where I was before. Mm -hmm. And to the to the point of actually, um, Montreal Mountain Harbor, who I was with, they passed on me in contract renewals a couple of years ago. Oh wow! Uh, they were trimming budget. They were trimming their team from 17 down to 10, and uh, I was one of the seven cuts. And it's amazing how things work out sometimes because yeah. I picked up Solomon within uh, within four weeks. And then the very first race I ever did as a Solomon sponsored athlete was my course record at Hurt in 19 hours and 35 minutes. So that is awesome. <laughs> it was. Uh, it was. That is it, awesome. It felt pretty good. Yeah, there was all kinds of motivating factors in that race that day. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, I love that we're we're like we're having a really good conversation here, and the chat room is talking about Pornhub and that my roommates aren't playing video games; they're watching porn. <laughs> and and that I'm watching porn on the side as well. Way to keep it on topic there, chat room. Way to That's go, guys. Stuff. All right. As they do, I'm just going to make this magic box uh, do something here for me. <laughs> Press a valve, and to a point, it's the uh, it's the invert, inverted U-curve. To a point, I get smarter and um, more coherent, and then it just goes off the rails on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that we also have Chris Vargo in the chat room. Uh, Fargo. Obviously, you saw how e you know how easy it was for me to handle one live video feed uh, from a guest tonight. That obviously worked really well because Skype is just awesome. Uh, but I, it actually would not let me physically do two, so I couldn't bring Vargo in. I wanted to have you two on the show at the same time. Maybe we can do it in a future episode or something. But that would be awesome. Yeah. He is. Uh, he's been in the chat room keeping everybody. I don't want to say on topic. I'll just say entertained. <laughs> <laughs> he's been he's been jumping around. So thanks, Chris, for sticking around and 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 uh, answering people's questions. Is he removing articles of clothing, articles of clothing as it, uh, <laughs> as it degrades in there? Is that where this is all coming from? Yeah, that, that, that sounds accurate. <laughs> uh, yeah, Gary, uh, vegan or vegetarian? Or are you, you meat uh, eater or just no gluten? Uh, wife is vegan, and I, um, I'm not a vegan myself. I eat a predominantly vegan diet just because she's such an incredible cook, mm -hmm. um, but I do still eat quite a bit of fish and occasional chicken. So I love sushi. Um, and there's no there's no moral dilemma for me, I guess, unfortunately for some people's perspective, but uh, eat a very vegetarian-heavy diet, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's actually paid big dividends in the last couple of years as well just for the underlying health benefits of it. Nice. Yeah, I, I know up in Vancouver, you guys <laughs> you guys have uh, some of the best sushi oh. up in Vancouver. So, and yes, so and in North Vancouver, I live on Lonsdale and 23rd, and Lonsdale is the central hub of North Vancouver. It goes downhill to the water, and then you can get a water taxi into Vancouver. What I'm getting at here in a roundabout way is there's 23 blocks between me and the water. There's 20 sushi restaurants between me and the water. <laughs> that is fantastic. Uh, <laughs> one of Kim and my favorite sushi restaurants is The Eatery, which is in Kitsilano, because they have a huge vegetarian sushi menu, which is rare yeah. at any sushi restaurant, so it's really, really delicious. Yeah. People in the chat room, actually, specifically Christopher Holloway and Dallas Green are asking you to put on the helmet in the background. Do you have a helmet <laughs> back there? Yes. People thought it was a Stormtrooper helmet. It does look kind of Stormtrooper-ish. <laughs> 
Tell me you run ultras in that. <laughs> I actually did. I, I got back from the ski hill um, about 35 minutes before we completed this phone call. So as much as it looks like product placement, I didn't just pull it out of a drawer in the corner. There we go. Um, How do we not do the whole interview like this? I know, right? Seriously. And there's actually a Reebok pump style device here. So yes. I can inflate around my head. So I really can't hurt myself now. That is uh, awesome. My wife makes me wear this after 10 p.m. most nights of the week. <laughs> She's just afraid you're going to do something horrible. <laughs> you and your box wine. Uh, what was the other thing back, back there? People, people are loving... Gary Robbins. I probably don't need the chin strap done up. I mean, I'm probably safe enough to not. Uh, you never it. know. Yeah, just go for you're, right, you're right. You never know. I better keep that on there just in case. I heard you um, mention the ginger. So I definitely have a full fledged ginger beard. Yes. When I had hair that would have the follicles, when the follicles on my head worked, when they actually produced something, mm -hmm. it was more of a brown slash dirty blonde. But the uh, from the sideburns down is definitely ginger. That is great. Well, yeah. welcome to the club, Mr. Gary Robbins. Thank you we very welcome much. you. I'm a late bloomer, as they say in the ginger world. <laughs> I can't take you seriously with the helmet, the <laughs> goggles, and the glass of wine. It's awesome. <laughs> this is why Gary Robbins is legend, everybody. You are witnessing history. Gary is the best, and I cannot wait to run his race in August. If is there, are, is there space left in any of the uh, um, races? Very good question. We are down in the in the mid to low twenties, and one thing we don't do is we don't do wait lists. When we sell out, we we're gone. We're done. We yeah, you're done. We assume a fifteen percent attrition rate. Um, it doesn't have to be fifteen percent. We're not going to stop people from showing up once they register, but um, mm -hmm. we're down to the low mid twenties for the fifty k and the fifty miler. And we actually had I think four or five registrations today. So the way it's going right now, I would not wait. I would not wait longer than seven to ten days at this point, or you may get shut out if you're interested. Yeah, and and I'll 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 go as far as to say is like this race is tough. It's very very tough, and you might be thinking Squamish, British Columbia, where is that? That's far from me. Uh, it is worth the trip, if not just for the race, for the area, just to explore the area. I mean, you've got the Garibaldi Lakes up there. You've got Whistler within driving distance. You're within 45 minutes of Vancouver proper. It's some of the most beautiful territory you will ever run. The thing uh, I can't believe is the number of people that have it. come to this race over the first two years and never been to Canada, and not, and a lot of them not even having a passport to leave the U.S. and realizing how close it actually is. Yeah. So Tacoma, which is about 45 minutes south of Seattle, to give you an mm -hmm. example, um, Linda, my wife, was living in Tacoma while we were dating, and I would leave North Vancouver at 9 p.m., and I would be in Tacoma by midnight. Now, you're assuming no traffic at that point of the day, which is why I would drive at 9 o'clock at night. But yeah. What I'm saying is, geographically, the fact that I can go from North Vancouver to 45 minutes south of Seattle in under three hours lets you know that we are very close to major centers within the United States. That's incredible. I mean, I, even when I was driving up, I didn't realize I was driving up with my friends uh, Joe Chick and uh, Bethany. They, we were all carpooling up, and we had no idea just how close it was. It's within driving distance from Before the border. Before you like knew it, you were getting stripped at the border. <laughs> Did you say you wanted us to? I said before you knew it, you were getting strip searched at the border. We asked for that, though. We you asked for that treatment. You the whole thing. <laughs> I, I got it on my GoPro. I just didn't include that in the final edit. It's it's another video I'll have to post someday. Uh, so that this is actually it. It's been over an hour. I mean, I could talk to Gary all the time. I'm definitely going to bring him back on the show. Gary, thank you for joining awesome. us tonight. And Thank keep you. rocking that train race beer cap sack, man. It looks great Absolutely. on you. Absolutely. With the helmet and the goggles, of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so, again, follow Gary Robbins on Twitter. Go to his website. Follow him on Facebook. He's everywhere. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, his races are incredible. I highly encourage you to sign up for them. Uh, join me at Squamish if you'd like to run in the Squamish 50, 50K or 23K. It's just going to be an awesome race. That is it tonight, guys. I appreciate you being patient and dealing with us during the lagging periods, but uh, this will be on demand almost instantly, and we'll see you guys next week live Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Thanks so much, guys. It was a lot of fun. You got it, Gary. Thanks for joining us, man. Okay. Peace out.